Good teams win and great teams cover. Welcome into another episode here at Wildcat Cave. Week one of college football is officially in the books, and Kentucky beat Ball State 44-14 to start the season 1-0. There's a lot to take away from this game, both good and bad. Today we look back at the game and talk about what the Cats did well and what needs to improve and what does that mean for the season. Let's go. As always, guys, before we go any further, pause the video and subscribe right now if you aren't already. After you do that, check out our new membership tiers as well. There's some really cool perks that come with them, so give them a look and consider signing up. But we will start on the defensive side of the ball because I think that's where we can take away the most positives. For starters, I think the D-line may be the most improved position group on the team. Kentucky has consistently had trouble getting pressure on quarterbacks with the exception of Josh Allen's time here, but that could be changing now. Against Ball State, Kentucky had eight tackles for a loss and three sacks. Last season, Kentucky only recorded 20 sacks on the season, which put them very close to the bottom of the SEC. This year, they need to get into the 30s, I think, in order to really be a top-level SEC defense Brad White is hoping for. Deion Walker is going to be key for them to reach that number. In Week 1, his stats didn't jump off the page, but if you watch the game, he was consistently disrupting Ball State's offense and being double or even triple teamed, which opened up rushing lanes for guys like Khalil Saunders, who had one and a half sacks, and Trevin Wallace, who led the team with 12 total tackles. The biggest weakness on the Cats' defense has to be the secondary and pass coverage. We knew going into the game that that would likely be the case, especially against Ball State, who likes to throw the ball around. They allowed Ball State to complete 73% of their pass attempts, and frankly put, that isn't going to cut it when you get into SEC play. Now, to the defense and Brad White's credit, they are and always have been a bend-but-don't-break style defense where they give up a lot between the 40s but lock down closer to the end zones. Also, it wouldn't be fair to overlook the fact that the refs had a questionable call which would have resulted in an interception for Kentucky. They were, however, very effective coming downhill and helping our front seven in the run game. Also, this new running clock that the NCAA has instituted this year really hurt them. Ball State was able to run 71 offensive plays compared to Kentucky's 51. If they had gotten off the field a little more, it likely would have helped that completion percentage. 71 plays against the team who likes to throw, along with having very little depth in the secondary in the very first game of the year, is a tall task. But regardless, 73% completion is way too high. Overall, I felt the defense was pretty aggressive in the bright spot for Kentucky this week. They had multiple big hits, which resulted in two forced fumbles and recoveries, one of which was a scoop and score. The second one would have been as well if the refs wasn't so absolutely awful the entire game. So it's hard to criticize a defense that should have had two scores and an interception along with three sacks. Also, after losing DeAndre Square and Jacquez Jones last year, J.J. Weaver and Trevin Wallace looked more than ready to be the leaders on this defense. Like I said before, the officials were terrible the entire game for both sides, but specifically for Kentucky, they cost us a touchdown and an interception, but overall, Kentucky still committed way too many penalties. They had seven penalties for 51 yards, compared to Ball State, who only had four for 26. Stoops addressed that in his postgame presser. I expect that to be cleaned up quite a bit this week against EKU. Another huge area of improvement last compared to last season was in our special teams. Kentucky was 3-for-3 three three on field goals and 5-for-5 five five on extra points. And while that should be something we take for granted, we learned that last year we just couldn't. So it's good to see that we've gotten that fixed. The kicker, Alex Rayner, that Stoops pulled from the portal, seems to be extremely reliable, and we didn't have any issues snapping or holding. Um, so that's all good. All of his field goals were made from over 40 yards. Also, we can't skip over the fact that Barry on Brown – called his shot at UK Media Days a few weeks ago when he said that he would return one, uh, a return a kickoff week one. He did exactly that, taking one back, 99 yards. Return a kick return. you going to have to play this back because I'm going to run and run back. Don't I ain't going to lie. I'm going to run and back and I'm going to hit <laughs> in front of my mama. You heard it. Don't kick it. Please don't kick it to me. It's going to be bad. I might get the special teams coach fired if you kick it to me. I ain't going to lie because I'm going to return it. Thank you. Overall, Great work from the special teams group and a huge credit to the new special teams coach slash, I think, running backs coach. Um, so I think we've seen a huge improvement there, and it goes to show 
that maybe they did need a special teams coach after all. And finally, that brings us to offense, which I think most fans may be a little disappointed about right now, including myself. We'll start with my biggest concern, which is our offensive line. Last year, they were the worst in the Power Five, so they could only get better from there, which I do think they did. They only allowed one sack and only three tackles for a loss, but they allowed Ball State to really disrupt our offensive game plan, especially in the first half. Most of these guys are returning starters or veteran transfers. I think like most of BBN, we were really hoping to see them dominate the line of scrimmage, which they did at times, but not really consistent enough, I think, for Big Blue Nation to really get excited about. Also, Kentucky suffered an injury at guard with Ken, when Ken Horsey went down uh, with a leg injury. Horsey is a key piece to this offensive line, and him going down had me extremely concerned. But his, but his backup, Dylan Ray, came in and played pretty well. Stoops did come out and say that this week that his injury isn't season-ending, so that's good news as well. Overall, I don't think the O-line was awful, but there's certainly room for improvement. And now for the two guys that the fans were most excited to see in blue and white, Ray Davis and Devin Leary. We can start with Ray Davis. In my opinion, he's as good as advertised. He did exactly what he needed to do in week one, he rushed for 112 yards and two touchdowns. I said before the season that I thought it would be running back by committee this year, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I think Ray Davis is getting and will get the majority of snaps for the Cats this season, uh, but they will still rotate through guys like Juton McClain and Ramon Jefferson and some others, especially when they want to throw out of the backfield. Ray Davis very much fits the Mark Stoops running back mold. He's hard-nosed, a downhill runner, very much like C-Rod and Benny, I actually think his breakaway speed may be a little better than those guys, though. Um, not saying he is better. I just think that aspect of his game might be a touch better than the other two. As for Devin Leary, he didn't have a huge game like everyone was waiting on, but he played pretty well and got better as the game went on. He was 18 for 31, which is a 58% completion percentage. He had 241 yards, one touchdown, one interception, and a QBR of 44.7, which honestly is not good. Like I said... He got better as the game went on, and I think there are a few reasons why he started 8 for 20 through the air. One reason he struggled was simply just drop passes by the receiver. He made their correct reads, delivered a good ball, and they just didn't catch him. Also, let's keep in mind that he hasn't played college football in well over a year. He's coming back from an injury, and there's going to be rust to shake off, not to mention just the nerves of his first game in a new program and a new system. And finally, I think he just threw too many deep balls. I'm not sure if that was him trying to make big plays or, or Cohen was calling for him, but that just isn't his strength. It was Will Levis's. Devin is much better at the 5-30 to 30 yard throws with accuracy and touch, not the 50-yard bombs that we tried way too many of. The offense didn't light it up like most of us hoped uh, we, they would, but overall I think we saw glimpses of what they can be when everyone is settled in and making smart plays. After starting 8 for 20 through the air, Devin and Kentucky finished the game completing 10 of 11 passes. They got back to doing what they were good at, letting Devin read the defense, making the right passes, and getting the ball to our playmakers in space. When we did that, we looked like a different team and a competent offense. Overall, I come away from the game very positive. Even though it wasn't the prettiest, we still won by 30, covered the spread. Of course, there are things to tighten up on both sides of the ball, but find me a team in week one who didn't have some miscues. I fully expect that next week against EKU will be a much cleaner game. I think Leary will be more settled in and our offense will look much better. EKU just got killed by Cincinnati this past week, so this will be a good game for us to start to fine-tune some stuff. We also have Akron and Vandy before we really get into the heart of SEC play. I liked what I so saw overall from Kentucky, and I think they have a chance to have a very special season. But that is going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you all for watching. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel right now to be on board for this football season. Check out the membership tiers while you're there. Let me know in the comments how you felt the first game for Kentucky went. Like and share the video. I'll see you guys next week. Go Cats!